Yeah, hello and welcome to another episode of the Spielworks uh, Chat Season 3. My name is Uli Blenemann and I hope you are all well. I do have a wonderful guest today. It is Per Silvester from Berlin. Welcome, Per. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. It's fun. This is good to hear. And um, if you have questions and comments today, please put them in the chat window and Per will respond. And I will lean back a little bit. But um, duration for today, Pear has his weekly gaming meeting tonight, so at 6.30, so in 43 minutes from now, so we will be in time and end so that Pear can join his regular uh, gaming group, that's for sure. Before we start, I have just a few Spielworks uh, news. So Several games are still available, or even more are available for pre-order from my shop site. It's the Spielworks um, website. Please check them out. And Orania, Oranienburger Kanal by Uwe Rosenberg is in its final hours at Spieleschmiede. I think five or six hours remaining, so live. So if you are interested, uh, please check out um, the, uh, you, uh, the website of Spieleschmiede, and the URL is... Here, let me put it in. Okay, and hello, Mo. Hello to Texas. Uh, good seeing you. But now back to Pea, back to you. Um, Pea, to start, what are you doing for a living? Yeah, I'm a teacher. I teach um, math and chemistry. Yes, full time. <laughs> and uh, in Berlin here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so, that, so uh, basically, you studied and then you immediately went to, to become a, a teacher. Yeah, so in Germany it's a bit complicated because you have to finish university and then you have to do, it's called referendariat, it's basically like an apprenticeship, a two-year apprenticeship. Now between that and my university, I went to Thailand for um, 15 months and taught there in an international school. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I think it's always good seeing other countries and not only for two weeks uh, in, in, during holidays, but, but really see something of, of the culture. So, and uh, maybe I have a question for, for this uh, later, maybe if I'm not forgetting, so I need to write this down probably. Um, but when did you start gaming, uh, Pear? The board games, oh, I was basically raised by board games. As my, I, my, my father was always very into um, abstract games. So he taught me chess in a very young age, I think four and a half or so, and um, also other games. And he used print out games from Richard Deitches. And um, so, and later, uh, 79, they bought the first game of the year, Herr mm -hmm. and Tortoise, and then every year they bought the game of the year, I think with two exceptions. And so I really literally was raised with games in the game of the year. And um, so, yeah, I can say I'm really, all my life, board gamer, and um, later in the 90s, I played, also, played a bit more role-playing games, but um, that the uh, group dissolved, and so I'm full mm. board gamer now, mm. basically. But, but uh, this is, um, although you are a lot younger than I am, but I think it's fairly typical for, for lots of uh, German uh, families that parents show their uh, children at that uh, time, uh, showed them games and played, um, introduced them to gaming in, in Germany. I'm not sure if this is still uh, still true uh, today in, in Germany, but yeah. I do with my kids, so. <laughs> so you see, tradition is uh, brought forward. But uh, are there any gaming genres you prefer um, privately when you, when you play games? Um, I remember that I play a pretty big spectrum, so I hardly play any two-player games now just because i'm more like someone who likes to play with more people mm -hmm. just one and one so that's more like an opportunity um i'm not uh always keen on the very complex or the absolute complex most games simply because of time and mm -hmm. if i have the same in german with a shorter or easier game i don't need it's just extra complex i mean i did play I do like 18xx or so, but it's not that I haven't played them regularly or anything. I'm, I'm, I play everything. I dip my toes in everything, so it's difficult to say which I really like. I mean, always I like elegant and games and original games. I mean, now something was played so long 
so many years that I have. I want to see new things, and that's that's basically. But it's not a genre, yeah. I know. Yeah, right. But but yeah, um, and and I think we can also see this in in your uh, own design. So not the ultra complex games and and games from different genres uh, here. And there is. Uh, Stefan Risthaus in the in the chat, and he's also saying um, he's uh, teaching his kids uh, games uh, too. So there, this is still a German tradition, I think. And hello, Hans, good uh, seeing you. But um, of course, it's a huge, huge step from playing games, enjoying games, and then designing games. So thinking about, ha, huh, I have an idea for for a game myself. So what made you think? I can or I should design my, my own game. Um, uh, well, apart from a very small try when I was very young, which I think in a certain age everybody tries to dibble around a bit and it was not very uh, good. Um, it, when I went to Thailand, that was really like a change in that case because back then there was no board game scene, as I, at least not that I was aware of. And um, so I downloaded a lot of PNP games, print play games, and also started like doing my own sort of like, make games that I can print out and I can also probably have some ideas right down, written down to what I can do with that. And um, I have a very, very, very early version of King of Siam, Beta mm -hmm. King is Dead, that like originally there because I liked the history of Siam of Thailand. Mm -hmm. So that's where basically it started. And when I went moved back after uh, 15 months to Germany, um, I after a couple of months I moved to Berlin, from Hamburg to Berlin, because I got a uh, position there um, for the Sefnariat. And I was um, one of the people, few people I knew in Berlin was Günter Cornett. Mm -hmm. And he like introduced me to this, this like gaming group or testing group and yeah, and so yeah, that's where I started knowing as a designer, so knowing how mm. to approach playtesting and stuff like that. So that's how it developed, basically. Mm. Yeah, Günther Cornett, uh, quite a character. So uh, <laughs> really interesting, but but really nice person. So I work professionally for him for Pack Ice and Pole. Hey, that's my fish. The, the game that is uh, still still available by, I think Fantasy Flight is even doing the English language edition. They did it, but I think they they had a new edition of, of this one. Günther Cornett, interesting. But this uh, leads me to, uh, because I had to look it up at, uh, at BGG, of course, so I haven't prepared. Your first published game book uh, was Jam Doodle in 2005, so 17 years ago, right? And um, so, so what is Jam Doodle, and was it difficult to get this published as an unpublished designer, or was this connection to to Günther helpful? Yeah, that was actually what started it. I I can't remember. We had um, back then. I was one of the few things I did was being in the back then Spielbox.de, which was a big internet forum back the, in the days, and. Um, and there was a discussion, and I don't can't remember what it was, but because of this discussion, Günther and I had an email contact because we had wanted to sort something else. And I asked him a question because I wanted to do a book about where just about games that can be played with a lot of people from various designers, and ask him if he knows how to approach it. And he helped me, and he also said that oh, I wanted to make a print-on-demand book. Anyway, and so he already said that he will publish it. So it was very easy to publish because I serendipitous asked the right person at the right time, and that's how it came. And um, yeah, that was that was the first one. It's a, a collection of board games. There's a game from Michael Schacht in there. There's a game from Nana Knizia in there. Um, there is something from James Ernest. So there's a big collection, but it's unfortunately only in German, mm -hmm. uh, and it's. It's not a bestseller or anything, but it's there's a few copies still sell every year for the I think for the people who work with groups, and that's, that's something like like an unknown secret tip. So that's uh, that's uh, something that works. And I think my first actually game was designed by Hiku Spiele, but a very very small publisher. Mm -hmm. um, also because 
Hartmut Kommer, also ein also Designer von Squid and Grape, äh, Game Designer Scene, told me that they were looking for abstracts with certain number of pieces and certain number sizes, and so I designed specifically for them. So, and, but that was all, also a print runner for about 100. Mm -hmm. So back then I had published two things, but I hadn't really experienced the joy of trying to pitch your project with anybody yet. Yeah. <laughs> joy of pitching can be a special joy, as every gaming author, designer uh, knows. Uh, yeah, uh, right. But but I think the, the gem doodle story is really fascinating. So the game, the book, so it's a collection of games for larger groups in there, and because it's printed on on demand, it's still available, right? Yes, it should be available. So if, if you understand or at least read German, please check it out. So uh, I, I think this is a wonderful thing. And you see it's Bear in, in there, it's Mattia, uh, Michael Schacht in, in there. So so some some really uh, great names. So, so very interesting. I didn't even knew this. Um, and there is a comment from uh, Von Strubel, we took our daughter every year to Essen Game Fair since she was born. Now she's 28 and still going and having a baby herself. Of course, we play board games all the time since early childhood until today, and I'm sure she will do the same with her child. German board game culture doing its magic. Yeah, this is a wonderful story. Thanks for, for sharing. So really the torch is passed from one generation uh, to the next. Yeah, and I think this is, uh, Pierre, you know, this German culture, not in all aspects, it's wonderful for sure. <laughs> But uh, I think this is a great uh, tradition. So, so uh, wonderful. So yeah, then, Pea, you were um, a designer, a published uh, designer, and I think what probably quite a few people will be interested is, in is um, you became a lot more known, although you had further games being published, notably Wir sind das Volk, um, where you are co-designer, but there, were, there are a few Osprey publications. So, uh, for example, The Lost Expedition, The King is Dead, second edition, which was based on König von Siam, and Brian Boru, of, of course. So, why do you think suddenly people saw, wow, Peer, this is a, a, a Peer Silvester, this is a great, great designer? Is it just, oh, yeah, please, please go on. Of, um, I don't know. People do say that, but it's, they do. They do. <laughs> um, it's. I mean, the games are quite successful, which is uh, always surprising to me. Uh, not that I don't like them or anything, but it's always it's uh, hard to get my head around wrapped around it. That um, yeah, because it's it's a late start, if you want. I mean, King of Siam or the King later King is dead was I think, uh, but King of Siam was already like in. When it came out, it was more publisher history games originally, and that was, but that had already a big fan base, I yes. think, in the US, as big relative to the print to the run. size of the, the, <laughs> the print run, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so when that came out, that was the first game, of course, that was published by Osprey Games, um, mm -hmm. the first edition at least. And I think it flew still under the radar because it was the first or one of the first three mm -hmm. published games back then when they mm -hmm. started doing uh, board games they yeah. did war games before but um that was like the first rush of games so it was maybe not yet so center in the attention of people mm -hmm. so when the second edition came out i think and then the people or know Osprey already, and they probably knew me already before uh, Lost Expedition, but mm -hmm. also Osprey for their work. And then when more people got, yeah, saw that King is Dead. And I, yeah, I mean, I think the King is Dead is a special design. It's um, something I'm very proud of. Mm -hmm. It started with a thought, uh, one, yeah, first of all, Obviously, this is historic work that Siam was not colonized back then. It was the original idea. But mechanically, my, my question was, what if you have a set of cards like in with action cards, which mm -hmm. yeah, many games use, but you don't get them back? 
Mm, Normally yeah. you play a handful of cards, play them down, and you get them back. And what ha if happens if you don't get them back? What would be, what would, how would that work? How would, can that even work? Mm. Because obviously, either you have, if you don't have a tons of cards, and then it will get difficult to choose from, yeah. or you have a deck which happens before, then the game would be very short, and then you have to, but it might be too constricted. So that's what my. Um, my, my my basically ideas are. and I think that's uh, and it has because it has only this minimum uh, thing that happening because of that I think that's why people like its elegance and it has but also the depth I mean yeah small fun story I'm surprising you with is I check happened to check before the trip um, that someone at Phalanx Games actually rejected King of the Young back then because they said it does not, um, th th there's no, um, if you make a mistake, you cannot recover from it because there are only eight actions. Well, so that hmm. was probably me involved in there. So uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember actually. So you, you see, what do I know about game design? So yeah, uh, but um, um, to, to interrupt you, you here briefly, Pear, what I think all of your designs and King of um, uh, King is Dead, King of uh, König von Siam really shows is that you with minimal with a minimal amount of complexity and rules uh, uh, length that you can achieve some depths, quite some depths in, 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 in games. And I think that's is one of the reasons why people really like King King uh, King is Dead, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And it's something similar, I think, with Brian Baru, that you have um, also this basic core system with like, trick, inspired by trick taking. Again, my, my idea was what happens if every card in a trick is connected to an action, and then yeah, so you, the follow of the suit rule has to go because uh, it would be yeah. too constricted. But um, that took much longer to develop in total than King of CM, which was worked pretty fat much from the start. But yeah, my um, I always call it bottom up and top down designs. Mm -hmm. um, there's two times, uh, so there's one type of design is you start with a core and then you just try to add what you need to make a game about what you ever want to make it about or make the game finished and round right. that it works. And the other design possibility is um, you, t you take something, for example, the theme or whatever and or genre and put and think, what do I want to put in this game, or what do I want to put, and then you try to connect this. And um, both are valid, yeah. of course, absolutely valid. No, there's no, 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 there's no judgment. It's just like, for me, I think I found that this bottom-up design worked much better for me. Um, and that's why these designs are often um, designed around a one core, and they mm. are very simple, and uh, the rule, rules-wise, and I have to go a lot in terms of complexity with a little with little rules because I don't want to add too much mm. or not not more than necessary. So so yeah so so in Brian Boru you really said before you started the design you, you, was this your initial idea I want to do a trick taking game with a board or how did you approach uh, uh, this because I think it, it's it's pretty unique, it's innovative, and it works really, really well. So, so how, how did you design the game? Um, so I I have this thing when I have when I have an idea, like for example, okay, if it's trick taking and you, you need several actions, then I look in my big file of stuff <laughs> if I have something which I can combine it with, and I had uh, disbanded. To spend in prototype of, about Brian Boru that did not work, and but I did like the story uh -huh. of Brian Boru and how what he did, and I thought, well, I still had and I still had the game board for it um, because I haven't thrown I don't throw anything <laughs> uh -huh. game design, so I thought, okay, I could maybe use that for this, and then um, so the tricks are connected to the board, which makes actions useful uh -huh. because. Well, if you don't have a board, but action, then your all the action would be with the cards, which are also trick-taking cards, and that would be complicated. So you don't, you have two sets of cards, which would be difficult to hold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought, okay, you must have something on the board and something on the cards, and you should be playing with the card with the trick-taking that affects the board. Mm -hmm. How that would changed a lot during yeah. the design process. So that was a very, very long process, but it... Um, 
but that was a core core direction I went with. Yeah. Do, do, do you think that you are opening doors here so that there will be more board games, so really games with a board and, and with pieces on the board using the trick taking mechanic, or do you think it's it's very difficult to design actually, so so that it, it it's not really something that that a lot of people will use. Hard to say. I mean, I would be glad if someone would take something I designed and make something completely different from it. I, that, that's, I think, one of the highest praises you can have as a designer if um, yeah. if you like invent invent a genre, if you want to like, say mm. name it like that. And um, I think there is a lot of design space there because the way you what actions you use can be so different, you can make a, I mean, there is already one race trick-taking game, mm -hmm. I think, um, and you could go, every majority is for me over something because I like every majority games, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you do tile laying or whatever, just combine it with anything else and then you have already like a direction you want to go. So I think it's, it can work and it's just, there are, the balancing of the cards is like the, the least interest, the least difficult part in the end. Or the, it takes a lot of time, but it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. So I think it. Yeah, like I say, I would be glad um, if someone picks it up and takes something else with it. That would be cool. Yeah. So, you, so if if some designers are uh, watching this, you have the peer approval here. So uh, steal all his ideas and do some some games. So. What, what, what I also, when I um, saw the game first and when I heard about it first is, what I think is very clever um, too is that a lot of people and especially non-gamers or people who rarely play um, more complex games that they know how trick-taking works. This is uh, something especially here in Germany and some other countries what everybody knows already, so that the hurdle to get into the game is uh, is really low. So, so I think this is also very, very clever. Yeah, yeah, and game da ist. He's they saying very nice idea, Pea. Yeah, I, I cannot agree um, more. And uh, do you have from from all your games um, you did so far? Do you have a game pair? That is your favorite one, or can you say so, or several favorite ones? Uh, it's it's hard. I mean, it's always hard to name favorite games for me because it always depends a lot on the group. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, I, King of King of the Arm, or King of the Dead, I really I played probably the most, especially. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's a part, uh, especially with partnerships, because I really, really love partnership games, and so that's that's, that's why it's. A, Right in front, and um, I would also think I like uh, um, that, that in cake. It's, it's a bit underrated, I think. Uh, uh, it's so strange because everybody I play it with when I'm there has a lot of fun, but I think it's it's a problem to teach the game in a way with rules how to play it in a fun way. I think that's why it went a bit. Mm. I felt flat for a lot of people, apparently. So that's, um, but I personally like it a lot. Yes. Mm. And then uh, you you are mentioning a game, so so that you play in teams. So was on Wir sind das Volk was a two and two expansion your your idea or? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, makes What's sense. Then. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. And this, by the way, is another fantastic uh, design by by yours. A little bit more complex, but still uh, very man uh, manageable. Yeah. Um, of course, it's a, in a with a theme like that. It's, it has to be a certain complexity level, and um, yeah, I mean that's that's all. It's, that was a game where I said that's nearly a bit more top down than I usually design because I want know what I wanted to have in the game. And, and so, so is it most of the designs you are doing are your own, so one hundred percent. So how is it to work for you with another designer? Is this something that you'd like to do more often in the future, or are you a person now from my time scale, from my time, from my scheduling? It's better if I do it alone. So what do you prefer? Um, I would work more with other people, but the problem is really that the way I work is always I look work in a lot of designs 
simultaneously, and there are always a lot of gaps where I don't have much time because I have a full-time job. And um, so it's often that I have, I, I, it's, it stresses a lot if I have to think, okay, I, I, if I don't work on it, the other person, I let, let the other person down. So um, it's not that I work constantly on one design, it does not, mm. so the, and the way I work is, I think, not so incredibly suitable with partnerships. So mm. as, as a co-design, it's like, I mean, it worked with, with Richard, obviously, but it's, um, the good thing was that we both live in Berlin, it was a advantage, so, but, um, yeah, it's not that I don't want to do anything, I think just that my design time and the way I did design is not the perfect way to co-design. Yeah, um, I, I can imagine, so it uh, makes uh, sense. Um, um, so, can you give us some hints here, Pea, what, what people can expect in the future from you? So, so what will be next? Um, that's a good question. I mean, there's, I have in Germany another trivia game coming out in two years, I think. Um, but that's a long, long way, there, long way down. Um, with also like quite unique twists. Um, and I have a lot of design and with a lot of publishers, but there's nothing has been approved yet. So, um, there is one, I say, sequel in spirit of one game that mm -hmm. I'm pretty pretty um, sure will be published because it's a sequel of a successful game from myself, but I'm not sure if I can talk about it. Of course, of course you can. Of yeah, course you can. Actually, you have to know. If, it, if, it, if, it, if it's a problem, don't... don't. Especially because I, 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 like I, know, I, I know for sure if it will be published and if I say something and then it won't and it's it's no. always a bit of a letdown. So, um, yeah. so many games I would like to see published, obviously, but um, yeah, it's now um, it, it's the last two years was also difficult, I guess, yeah. for, for a lot of publishers to play test. So there is a big queue in many, yeah. um, in many, in many bigger publishers, especially. But also, yeah, I have I kind of made because they couldn't play test, so I don't have they didn't come back to me, I suppose. And, yeah, are you, are you playing a lot uh, online, uh, Pea, or is this something that you really don't want to do, don't want to do? So, so if you design a game, are you doing a TTS or Tabletopia or Vessel module and, and pitch uh, games in this way, or are you always sending out physical prototypes? Um, I prefer to send physical prototypes. I mean, I did some for pitching. I sometimes used I used to use, sometimes use TTS. Um, but it's not, I guess playing online is much more difficult yeah. and, and much a big hassle. And, um, like I said, I, I personally enjoy my company. That's why I play games and then it's missing online. So, yeah, but, um, it does open new doors if you can publish, uh, pitch something with tabletop simulator, of course. So that's something I would always offer. For certain games, but not for all games, because it's also like if there are a lot of components, especially Oops. close to impossible. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is uh, in my experience uh, also. I. I've seen too many uh, online pitches now. So, so uh, if I can now avoid it, um, then then I'm not doing it. But of course. Um, we all have to see the advantages. It allows uh, an overseas designer to pitch to European publishers and vice versa. So, so uh, of course, it has advantages. But it's not the same thing as having a physical um, copy uh, on, on your table. And by the way, in the chat, Hans had the same question um, that you already answered, uh, if there is something in the pipeline. So uh, great minds and all this, uh, I, <laughs> I uh, guess, uh, here. And um, yeah, Pea, because uh, I said this initially, you have now in 15 minutes your gaming group. So I would don't want to take you here, hold you for too long. Thank you uh, very much for being um, our guest here today. So this is uh, really appreciated. And for everybody who hasn't, you brutes, uh, who hasn't played a pair design, you should <laughs> do so. There, uh, just check out his um, 
is various uh, designs. Uh, they are quite different, so I'm sure you will find a nice game uh, designed by Pea. And as Pea, of course, uh, explained, most of them are really elegant. They are really elegant. And uh, so um, you should, if you aren't a Pea fan, you will be a Pea fan uh, <laughs> afterwards. Um, and for all viewers, thanks a lot. Pea, if people can reach you, how can they best do so? Um, I have, I'm on Twitter, it's at König von Siam. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, that would be probably the easiest way to get to get me. You can also send me an email, but uh, yeah, Pear at spielbar.com. .com. So that's what my, my blog, German blog, Spielbar. Um, yes, that's basically the best way, but Twitter is good, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so uh, people, if you really want to get, get hold of uh, Pea, you will do so. And, um, the, and Stefan is saying uh, that he played and enjoyed uh, König von Siam and uh, North American Railways. So these mm -hmm. are the designs uh, that um, Stefan played. Next week, there is no Spielworks check, uh, chat. I really want to do this bi-weekly from now, so we'll see. Next one is on May 31. Uh, thank you all for your time. If you have an idea for a special topic here to discuss, or I have just a couple of questions, please drop me a mail at uli at spielworks.de. That is uli at spielworks.de. Until May 31, bleibt alle gesund, support the Ukraine and... Bye-bye. Thank you, Pea. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.